The year did not start out on a positive note, with China's growth slowing, the stock market declining, and oil prices in flux. And according to our latest hotel lender survey, more than three quarters of lenders expect the hotel sector's growth spurt to peak before the end of 2017. However, before we venture towards the dark side, let's recall the outstanding year 2015 was. Last year, we reached record performance levels across every top-line metric. Occupancy reached 65.6%. ADR hit $120. RevPAR was $79. Demand approached 1.2 billion occupied room nights, and room revenue surpassed $142 billion. We also crossed peak levels for individual days. Occupancy for the U.S. hit 86.9% on July 18th. ADR hit $152 on New Year's Eve. RevPAR reached $114 on the last Saturday of July. The third Saturday of July saw a record level of demand and the week after, we achieved a new record for room revenue in a single day. Rate growth has been a focus of attacks throughout this upward cycle. However, looking at inflation-adjusted ADR, we noticed that despite a slower pace, we have surpassed the previous peak in room rates as a result of the prolonged growth period. Breaking it down property by property, we get a little more clarity on how room rates are growing. Here we show the percentage of hotels with ADR growth and those with ADR declines from 2001 through 2015. Those below the benchmark had ADR declines while those above experienced increases. In 2015, more than 80% of hotels increased their ADR. This is a modest improvement from 2014, but in line with the volume of properties that saw positive rate growth between 2005 and 2007. When we break it down further into buckets of 5% increments, we see an even clearer picture. Again, the darker red shows a more significant decline, while the darker green shows a more significant increase. In 2015, 47% of hotels increased their ADR by more than 5%. Only 2006 and 2007 saw a larger percentage of hotels increase rates more than 5%. Moreover, 21% of hotels grew rates by more than 10% last year. 2006 was the only other year when more than 20% of hotels were able to push room rates to that degree. Across hotel markets, we are also experiencing differing levels of RevPAR recovery as well. Still, 89% of the submarkets in the U.S. exhibited gains in RevPAR last year. Breaking it down further, more than two-thirds of the submarkets had gains greater than 5%, and 30% had RevPAR increases greater than 10%. Looking at the United States, we see the RevPAR change for each of the 630 submarkets in 2015. The darker the green, the higher the growth rate. The darker the red, the greater the decline. The obvious story is the decline of the oil and gas markets, particularly in Texas, North Dakota, Oklahoma, West Virginia, and Ohio. Contrary to the strong RevPAR gains these areas exhibited during the recovery, these locations are now seeing their performance suffer from dissipating demand coupled with a recent influx of supply. As we attack the top 10 hotel markets, we see that the vast majority enjoyed average rate gains above 4% last year, with modest to strong occupancy growth as well. New York was the laggard on the rate growth side of the equation at a flat occupancy level. Meanwhile, Houston saw occupancy slide with a subpar rate increase. And Washington, D.C. is also a slight outlier with only inflationary rate growth. Many analysts are concerned, if not downright negative, about the ability of the hotel industry to continue its strong performance. Some fear the end may be near and the bubble will burst. However, there is certainly reason to be optimistic. If we follow the path of occupancy and average rate performance through this cycle, from the peak, through the downturn, 
and then back through the recovery to today, we see our current position at a record occupancy and average rate. Our current trajectory, as well as the historical performance of the industry, would suggest that occupancy will stabilize and perhaps taper slightly, while rate performance will continue to grow. Taking a look at the two pieces of the segmentation puzzle, transient demand and group demand are clearly on different paths. Both demand components continue to grow, but the transient segment continues to outpace group. In 2015, transient demand increased 2.7%, while group demand rose 2.2%. And over the course of the recovery, transient demand is 30% greater than the previous peak, while group demand is only 3% above its prior peak. We would be honored if you would join us. It shouldn't be a surprise that the second largest revenue generator for our industry is food and beverage. 2015 food and beverage data for full service hotels shows solid growth in revenue from all three sources. Banquets and catering led the way with 7.7% growth in revenue per square foot. Some may deduce that while group room night demand is soft, overall group spending is strong. Despite all the strong growth metrics achieved over the past year, there are numerous obstacles that we will need to navigate over the next few years. Many are already running for cover. Since the hotel sector has been performing so well for so long, we are often reminded of history and the cyclical nature of the industry. As we scan the horizon to see what may be coming our way, supply growth is at the forefront of concerns within the industry. Supply growth has been suppressed over the past few years. But it is on the rise, with the number of openings ballooning in 2016 and 2017. Nevertheless, it is important to note that even in 2017, the supply increase is expected to sit below the long-term average for annual growth. While construction is well underway on many of these projects, the upscale and upper mid-scale segments will continue to account for the bulk of the pipeline over the next two years, with roughly 60% of the new rooms slotted in those two classes. Difficult to see. Always in motion is the future. As we gaze into the future, it is always difficult to be accurate with all of the unknowns. In 2015, STR underestimated occupancy and overestimated rate growth for the year, with the forecasted RevPAR metric in line with actual results. For 2016, STR expects occupancy growth to taper, while room rates will continue to experience moderate gains. Overall, RevPAR is anticipated to increase 5%. Finally, to coincide with our outlook, we reviewed the responses by hotel lenders to ascertain their perspective of the hotel industry. At the end of 2014, there was far more optimism than pessimism, and overall sentiment was evenly balanced between cautious and confident. In our most recent survey, the tide has shifted a bit, with more caution in the air than confidence. As we look out on the horizon, there are definitely two sides. One illustrating the continued growth of performance with modest supply growth and strong demand levels. And another pointing out the concerns in the greater economy that will rein in our industry growth and cause turmoil just as supply gains momentum. Nevertheless, for those on either side of the conflict... The force will be with you, always. <laughs>